So one of the ways that we can create these environments for these discussions, right, is through what I call creating and holding space. Um, and what this means is that creating an environment of inclusion, right? So creating the space for people to be at the table, to speak up at the table, to be heard at the table, um, and to be told how the table um, is operating. Because I think that's important. It's, a, it's about communication. So how can we do that with our colleagues, with friends in the community? Um, and so I picked out six. There are a lot of different things that you can do. Um, but this is, this is one of the approaches that I use when I teach on these subject matters um, to create spaces like this one where people can come and say things that they might be worried might offend somebody or land on somebody differently. So one of the things, particularly in the US-Japan space, is we have to acknowledge hierarchy. Right? We have to acknowledge hierarchy in normal situations, but we really have to acknowledge it in the Japan, US-Japan situation. Right? And so hierarchy really sometimes can create barriers right, to some of these real conversations. Uh, if you are in a work situation, right, the, there's risk involved. People feel like they can't stand up and say anything because they might lose their job. Or to Zara's point, they might be perceived as aggressive or assertive. So we have to acknowledge the hierarchy and also find a way to take away or at least temporarily remove its impact um, on the situation. It's important to read the room. So today when we did the icebreakers and check-ins, um, part of that is trying to understand where people are. Um, how did they show up? What, um, you know, what is their level of engagement going to be in the conversation? Uh, you have to create a circumstance where people feel free to make mistakes, to not get it right, to blunder through trying to figure out the terminology in their own words, right? Because it's one thing for me to tell you the words. It's another for you to figure out and try to figure out a way to use the words yourself right, in a way that you feel comfortable with. Um, and so when you're talking to people, both in a conversation, you want to make sure that you give people permission to make mistakes and don't feel like they have to get it right. Um, one of the most important things about creating and holding space is you have to create it through empathy, integrity, and sincerity. None of this, these conversations, no progress can be made it's my belief without humanity, right? Without empathy and sincerity, you have to want to be having these conversations. Um, there are ways to do it with people who don't want to have the conversations, but you have to be invested and have a stake in it. So there has to be some sincerity um, and empathy, putting yourself in somebody else's shoes, not just saying, oh, you know, that must suck, but trying to put yourself in the in the shoes of somebody who's experiencing something. It's really, really important to keep your own ego out of it. This is not about you fixing something. This is not about you um, trying to show people that you're right. It's really about supporting and listening to other people in the room and the other person who you're in conversation with. Um, and like I've said before, it's really important to focus on the impact of your words and actions and not your intention. Because we often, we always say, oh, I didn't mean to offend you. It doesn't mean, it doesn't matter if you didn't mean to, you did, right? And so how you have to focus on um, your impact, how it lands on people. And you can ask people, you know, how did you, you know, this is what I was thinking, but this is what I thought I said. Is that what you heard? <laughs> um, and I do that a lot with people because I always think that what I'm saying is different than what people actually hear. So in holding spaces and creating spaces for these conversations, these are things that I think that you can actually put into practice along with things like active listening, you know, face-to-face uh, -face or like eye contact, uh, being present in the conversation. All of those things are, are, are concrete things that you can do uh, that I think will start to facilitate some of these opportunities. Um, 
And so we did not have time to do that. But the last thing I would do is allyship. Um, a lot of some of your questions were around the issues of allyship. How can we be good allies? Um, these are my six uh, for this group. Um, the big one, hold your business partners and funders and other people in positions of authority accountable for what they say, what they don't say. Um, and you know where you spend your money, spend your time, that says something, right? So um, hold those people accountable. Validate other people's experience. I don't have to agree with you, but your experience is valid because it's your experience, right? Don't disregard other people's experiences um, because that is, it's, it's not productive. Um, and it's something that can also, again, lead to barriers to progress. Uh, we always talk about bringing people or people coming to the table, bring people with you. If you're at the table, if you're in a position of authority, bring people to the table, but don't just put them there, introduce them around, uh, give them a voice, turn to them um, in times and say, hey, what do you think? Um, so it's not just about, again, it's not just about having them there, including them, but about having them also um, have a, a stake uh, or participation. Uh, stand in the gap. Many of you are in positions of authority, respect, and otherwise, both in this community and in all the communities that you inhabit and within your spheres of influence. If you can stand in those positions uh, and give voice to the people who don't have that privilege, that is one way that you can uh, be constructively a good ally. Uh, recognize and encourage those who do speak up and speak out, uh, elevate their voices, um, and acknowledge that, you know, hey, you did, you did good. Thanks for saying that. Thanks for stepping up. Um, and then find your own unique way to contribute, to, um, to move the needle forward or roll the, uh, roll the rock up the hill, whatever the analogy is. Um, but find the thing that only you can do um, and do that to contribute to advancing these uh, ideas and goals in the relationship. 